The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our home page and check out for more videos. Thank you. There are three ways to teach a child. The first is by example. The second is by example. And the third is by example. See, he is Albert Schweizer. A German theologian. See, young people, we said last week, expect parents to live a life consistent with what they profess. We therefore need to be examples in marriage and family life. Good examples. D.L. Moody once said, D.L. Moody, we need a And I quote, a man ought to live so that everybody knows he is a Christian. And most of all, his family ought to know. Unquote. A man ought to live. So that everybody knows he is a Christian. Most especially, his family ought to know. And then we spend time talking about what young people expect from their parents and guiding. So the parents and guidance, young people expect certain things from them, and then we try to bring some of them out last week. Now we concluded saying that as Christians, we should reflect Christ in our marriage and family lives. In so doing, we'll be setting a good example to the world to emulate because that is our target that we will be good examples. Yeah, and by so doing, we will prove to the world that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the way, the truth, and the life. So that indeed Jesus was sent by God. Now today we want to continue saying that a boy whose parents never attend church and are not born again. And who makes no pretense, the parents make no pretense about being spiritual. Who excuse the parents' behavior as it is consistent with their e religion. Na se na wo fo no wonim Kristo na wo ade yemu no abra bo nyina no e de de pefe se wonim awurade a sa abofra no ya na osusu se na na wo fo abra bo no e be ha no. They excuse their parents because their parents are not religious. So whatever they do, he can excuse them because their parents they don't go to church, they don't believe in God. Yes. But a youngster who sees the father who professes to be a Christian and also goes ahead to accept church leadership position in church. Mm. And then come home and yell. Now, what be fear? No, what in tear? Tear? Blame. And they so bro and bitter children. 
na enumu no wo hye mofra eni yaya abuse wife na wo tete won yire no organize no devotions in the house na enumu no kura won hye mpai bo ana se osori ye asom e wo fie we find it very difficult to accept their double standards na sa bo fra we no ya na any day se obetumi ate awofu a won bra bo yi eni ne wo ka no bo abra no ase see brothers and sisters ke adofo no we are often consistently inconsistent. Consistently inconsistent. And our, and our children, they can't take that. But a consistent Christian life can be achieved. It must be lived through the will. Not through mere emotions. Now we know any no kasa keke. I see a bomb modding. See a bit me a boss abran. We should take steps to correct the past. I see a bomb modding. Say no ma ya ya any chemuno. You bet me a CSC. May I encourage you to begin today? Then let me show you Christ. Say shall see ne. Consistent Christian life is achievable. Okay, abrabo aye boss a Christo for any nyami asem keke si si ni no. You bet me a ya. It must be lived through the will. Not merely through emotion. You should take steps, take decisions as to what to do. After hearing all that we have been saying about family life, make a decision. And I want to encourage you that start it today. Because all is not lost. It is not over yet. Dr. John Haggai of the Haggai Institute says, Be careful what you call impossible. Be careful what you call impossible. I want to say that don't despair on your children. On your spouse, or on any member of your household. Now don't despair on them. That's for this boy. Don't despair on them. Be careful what you have labeled impossible. Take steps to make the correction. Don't suck your difficult child from the home. Now, please pay attention to this. Don't suck your difficult child from home. Don't do that. Don't suck your difficult child from home. See, when you do that, you don't qualify to go out with us to go and preach the gospel of Christ. No, you don't qualify. Once you sack your boy from home, once you sack your difficult girl from home, when we go out on rally, are you going to look for the same person? So you don't qualify to join us when we go out to look for the lost. But sometimes it is difficult. But you see, the person is your child. A member of your household. Now, are there some remedies? Yes, we've said a lot. But today I want to encourage parents and guidance to be a praying people. They should be a praying people. See, the value of prayer, none can measure. I trust in the power of the word of God. My brothers, I fear prayer. I trust in the power of the word of God. But I fear prayer. Go through prayer can bring back our wayward children. He can, through prayer, 
guide our children into their providential way. So prayer is partnering with God. Prayer is partnering with heaven. To reverse the seemingly irreversible. Because with him, there is nothing impossible. So John Haggai says, be careful of what you have labeled impossible. God through prayer can save our way watchers. Can change your spouse. Can make your home a heaven. The angels can be descending and ascending in your home. Jacob said, God is here and I didn't know. God is with you. He is in your home. Please. Open your eyes. And and partner with heaven. Let your house be a house of God. We just need to raise prayer altars for our spouses and our children. Job chapter 1. Job. From verse 1. To 5. Job chapter 1. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred donkeys, and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. Now, a woman and pen song, ne yoma and pensa, ne an entry and pahon a henum, ne a funumo berie a henum, ne a son for be brave pa. Now, a berry may you so send a poem manunina. Now pay attention to this. His sons used to hold feasts in their homes on their birthdays, and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. Now ne mamere mano koto puno wo oba kufiye ubiara ene ne da na wosma ma woko fre wunu ya mama no ba sano ba se wani wong emedidi na wonom. Now. Pay attention to this. One. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job will make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he will sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, Perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their heart. This was Job's regular custom na punto on na no e fa won su sia hio so ma ko dwira won na otua hima ko bo o sia fo de se de won nyina dodo ote e firi se hio kan se e bia me ma no aye bone na wadumi nyankopon won akoma mu sa anana hio ye da after the feasting is over a punto on nyina e chire he made arrangements for them to be purified. And he does that early in the morning. He sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them. Now thinking. Not that he has seen them doing anything ever, but thinking. Perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. It means that he didn't see them do anything evil. But he knows they are children. They are young people. As they were partying. Maybe. 
they might have done something against God. He says in their hearts. And this one was a regular practice from this righteous man. See, this job. <laughs> See, the offering he made on behalf of the children was a form of prayer for them. And it was a regular practice right. by this righteous man. Now he was a go-between God and the children. What that means is that he was their priest. Because his home was a house of God. What a man. What a man. In Job 33, a young man by name Elihu somehow joined the discourse between Job and his three friends. Attempting to persuade Job to accept that perhaps he has sinned against God. That is why all this trouble has come upon him. That is why all the calamity, the affliction has come upon him. And then he says this. God speaks to men. And then he says that he does that sometimes directly. Other times, through dreams. And even through circumstances like job circumstances. So he is saying that maybe the situation that you are in, God has brought you into this situation just to speak to you away. Let's go to Job 33. Let's go and join Elihu. From verse 19. Or someone may be chasing on a bed of pain with constant distress in their bones. Now what the ya a trina so nimpaso ni ni num pemu da apridi. No, I jumped the verses that spoke about what I just said. And then I'm just coming to Job's case and what Elihu wants to say about the matter. No ma e dear ni mono and no new edi won't come da no and I may banya elihu or kasa e dear fa yub this tibiano. So verse twenty and dear twasu in your mind you their body finds food repulsive and their soul loves the choicest meal. Na nim kwa ma eduane funono na ne crapo na konode. Their flesh wastes away to nothing and their bones once hidden now stick out. Na ne honam fong mano ye hununa na ni numpa anka their flesh waste away to nothing. And their bones once hidden now stick out. They draw near to the pit and their life to the messengers of death. Now he's describing someone who is very sick. To the extent that he's saying that the bones, maybe the rib, the bones that were once hidden because of flesh, now stick out. And I'm sure he was talking to Job. Job, Job your bones are now protruding, <laughs> maybe out of your body. You are too sick, and he's saying that uh, maybe God is speaking to you. Now, Ochirim said, "Hey, be a Job. Tina be a wakodu mo na se. Tina be a no nyami namso." Since that they draw near to the pit and their life to the messengers of death. But I'm interested in verse 23. 
Because of what I'm trying to say, that we need praying parents. Verse 23. This is Elihu, so speaking. Yet, if there is an angel at their side, NLT will say that if there is an angel to intercede for them, Yet, if there is an angel to intercede for them, a messenger, one out of thousand, one out of thousand people to intercede for this person who is almost being handed over to the angel of death. Sent to tell them how to be upright. And he is gracious to that person and says to God, Spare them from going down to the pit. This fellow is saying to God, Spare them. Spare this fellow from going to the pit. I have found a ransom for him, something to replace his condition now, so that he doesn't die. Let their flesh be renewed like a child's. Let them be restored as in the days of their youth. Then that person can pray to God and find favor with him. They will see God's face and shout for joy. He will restore them to full well-being. Now, he will restore them to full well-being. Now, what do I want to draw out of this? It doesn't matter the condition that Elihu described. He's still saying that if there is an intercessor who will speak on this fellow's behalf to God saying God spare this fellow's life one out of thousand God can restore be careful what you call impossible the highest form of Christian ministry is intercessory prayer we need parents who bear their children up, who bear their spouses up in prayer, yeah. asking God spare their life. Don't suck difficult children from home. Don't despair on your husband. Don't pack saying we are incompatible. If you are incompatible, God can make you compatible. Prayer, the value of it, none can measure. I pray that God will help us. That we will have men and women who will be praying parents. Children who can also bear their parents up in prayer. Don't see them quarreling every day and say that's for daddy and mama. But when you start praying for them, God through your prayer can reverse the situation. Paul constantly bore his children up in prayer. His congregation, he never left them. He kept them before the presence of God, daily praying for them. His aim was that the character of Christ will be formed in them. Galatians 4 verse 19. Galatians 4 verse 19. My dear children, for whom I am again in the pain of childbirth until the character of Christ is formed in you. 
me ma nkuma a mere komo awo bio ko si se wo bewie kristo suye e wo momo i'm not suggesting that start praying for difficult children or it is only difficult children who need to be interceded for pray for your child don't wait till the person becomes difficult pray even now that they seem to love god that god will sustain them so by his powerful word and spirit min kasa bompa ye ma mofra so odin fo nko a ne mom se se ya mofra wo ye wo ma no woni nyame mpo no ko so abompa ye ma won se ne be ya ba bi o nyame de won si no wo be ko so sa for this evening we want to pray tanse enna nyumre no kwase me be se bompa we time pray be se jibre bompa ye that god will heal broken marriages so nyankopon be ma wari a ejija aka bom that god will restore love in marriages when yanko pon be send the odo abaware mu bi o that god will turn couples heart back to himself again and to one another to yanko pon be ma aware fo akuma aba ne hu bi o na won adodo won ho ho so bi o that the hearts of children who are wayward be turned back to god and to the parents se mo fra wa boko no wo be san that children who have left home will come back home. That Christian homes will indeed be a church and a seminary. That family altars will be raised in homes again. We said that when we stop raising family altars, challenges in homes also started rising nya ye campaign no se ebredudu a wo gai se wo si afuru ebusua fori muti ahodo no sampen dudu no anso e na o hawo ni amane ye waware em sha se e koso now we want to pray now so pese ye bom pai that marital and family lives will be exemplary se ye busua e ni aware en sheye e be yen hweso pa now we we'll base our prayer on First Kings eighteen thirty seven. Na yadi empire bono ebejina ahim from huma edi kaino eti dunwache inyumo edi asanso. Now this is the great Elijah. Afi mumi enti Elia ifuakasi. Trying to reverse the whole condition, what seems to be uh, destroyed in Israel at the hearts of Israelite that has that has gone after Baal. He wanted that God. Will bring their hearts back to himself. Now when in Pai Bomu Israel, Maya, no one now come akwa ko dibal sumu echino, but so sign do one ba iradi and change you. First Kings eighteen thirty seven. A kind and you for whom I did kind no it didn't work in you edu asa and so answer me, Lord. Say Jemiso answer me. Eurade Jemiso So that these people will know that you, Lord, our God. Na omen yi enhu no se wo ewurade eni nyankopon so that these people will know that you lord are god and that you are turning their hearts back again omen yi enhu no se wo ewurade ni nyankopon na won so en na wo ma wo akoma asan aba that you are turning their hearts back to you again na wo na wo asan ama wo akoma Answer me, Lord. Answer me. So that these people will know that you, Lord, are God. That my children will know that you, Lord, you are God. That my husband will know that you, Lord, you are God. That my wife will know that you, Lord, you are God. That my wife will know that you, Lord, you are God. And that you are turning their hearts us back to you again wona wa ma wa koma assign a tree abba wonchen that you are bringing my wayward child back to the house again now we me ba wa bo ko no assign abefi we want to pray we see a bomb pai we will continue to be praying because we are bomb pai ya the god who caused family altars to be raised in home the whole of this man the radi be cause we am for him tie ya see the man musu awu do no because when we possess the homes sense e pese e fa fie no we will be possessing the future world fa fie no a e be father a che no so may god be with us the radi kan ye ho